I want to talk to you today about your spine and the low back because low back injuries are so prevalent, especially in our society that tends to sit so much and we tend to have poor body mechanics throughout our lifetime. So all these things set you up for having low back pain. Um, this is a model of the vertebral column and you can see we have 24 vertebrae in between which we have what are called discs and they're sandwiched in between the vertebrae. And those discs take a lot of abuse through compression, from twisting, shearing forces. And the disc is actually a, a great shock absorber, but if it is, has, has any shearing force, then it can actually be damaged. And it's made up of a soft center and a harder outer surface. And what can happen is that soft center can squirt out and push on the nerve root, causing a lot of sciatica or nerve pain. There's also musculature that tends to get weak on people over a lifetime. And if you don't keep those core muscles really strong, then they can get damaged pretty readily. So I'll uh, be showing you things that you could do to keep those muscles strong and to prevent low back pain. Also, I wanna train people how to really protect their spine and not take it for granted so that you really keep your spine protected through proper body mechanics and better postural positioning. So one of the ways that we uh, like to teach people about their back is to go over the anatomy of the spine. So typically with low back pain, you have five lumbar vertebrae. And in between the vertebrae, like I mentioned before, are the discs. The most vulnerable discs are the last two uh, vertebrae and the discs. And we number them from one to five. So from one down to the sacrum, the, the last two are the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae, or we shorten it and call it the L4 and L5 vertebrae. And you can see we actually name the disc the same way, the L4-5 disc or the L5-S1 disc, which are in between the, lumbar, the last lumbar vertebrae and the sacrum. So the reason those are more vulnerable are because most of our body weight lies on top of that area and it becomes a point of, of torsion or rotation. So what can happen, and this is a demonstration, you can see this red area, that's where the soft center has squirted out of the harder area and can actually push onto the nerve root that comes out in between the vertebrae. Now that can cause a lot of symptoms into the lower extremity. So one thing to note, if you have low back pain, acute low back pain, you have to really seek help if you have any loss of bowel or bladder function. So that's really critical. You have to seek medical attention right away. Or if it's associated with any fever, if you've had history of cancer, if you have any night pain along, uh, not just from positional night pain, but if it just wakes you out of a sleep, or if you have bilateral leg symptoms, meaning numbness or tingling into both legs, or if you have loss of control, motor control or muscle control of one leg or both legs, you wanna seek medical, medical attention right away. So those are some of the precautions. Otherwise, you can try to remedy the situation on your own. If the symptoms last, however, more than two weeks and they're not improving, you should then seek medical attention. So some of the things that you can do on your own to help remedy your situation with the low back pain, the combination of heat and ice works really well. So you can start out 15 minutes on a heat pack or a hot shower even, and then ice for 15 to 20 minutes right on the lumbar spine. Now this is a, an ice pack that we love because it's very pliable, so it would be very comfortable to lie on. And when you lie down, you wanna have your knees bent with a pillow underneath or a bolster, but having the knees bent, uh, both knees bent, helps to take the pressure off the lumbar spine. So this is a great ice pack. Um, nothing too firm or hard that'll be too uncomfortable in your low back. And then, like I said, you can use just a nice uh, heat pad 
or a hot shower and really get the hot water on your low back. That usually feels really good. But you always want to end with the ice because the ice is such a great local anti-inflammatory and it can really help to dissipate some of that heat or inflammation in the lumbar spine. Also, you want to try to rest, not be too active, and you won't feel like being too active anyway with the low back pain, um, but you want to try to get some really controlled movements into the spine, and I'll go over those a little later, but you don't want to be completely bed bound. You want to try to move, but in as pain-free of a motion that you can, and we'll go over body mechanics for that later, but it's really important to, usually walking is tolerable, um, even if you have to, you can't stand up fully it, with acute low back pain, people tend to want to be bent over a little bit. But as you get motion and you start walking, then you can usually stand up a little straighter. Also, we try to stay away from being too inactive. A lot of times in the old days, they used to say bed rest. And we don't want too long of a, a rest period. Really, we want to try to get you moving as soon as possible, but safely. So. You want to try to get up walking, even if it's, you can't stand up fully. With acute low back pain, a lot of times people can't stand up fully straight. They tend to be bent over. And uh, so you want to try to get moving, even if you're in a bent over position. And then as you continue to move, typically that helps to lubricate the joints and gets compression, decompression into the disc tissue and can actually help you feel better and then you can start standing up a little straighter as time goes on as you keep walking. Now you have to really gauge yourself and kind of know your limits. And typically we use a pain scale. So zero meaning no pain at all, 10 meaning excruciating, take me to the emergency room type pain. And you really don't wanna be beyond a five out of 10 pain level to do the activities. So if you're above a five out of 10, then you want to try to take it really easy and just do the ice and heat and check with your doctor about anti-inflammatory medication or muscle relaxers, sometimes those help. Um, but we found that the ice and heat are a really great way to help that acu those acute symptoms and to bring that pain level down to an, a lower level so that you can become more active. These are all just strategies to give you, but it's really important to consult with your physician if you have low back pain. And a lot of times they can, you know, come up with the heart of the matter and figure out what's going on with your low back, especially if you've had recurrent uh, back pain. And they can also prescribe physical therapy, which can give you strategies on prevention, similar to what we've discussed here today, but more specific to your diagnosis.